So very good morning, student. Uh, in this lecture, I'll talk about uh, combustion and its uh, related numerical problems. Actually, this topic is very important in the uh, examination point of view because we might get uh, numericals based on uh, calculation of air quantities. So I will uh, discuss all the things in my coming lecture now. Okay. So before that, let me talk about combustion. So combustion means it is an exothermic reaction which is accompanied by liberation of heat and light at rapid rate. So here nothing will happen here. So say for example, let me take a fuel and uh, which is uh, reacting with oxygen. So simply a fuel plus oxygen will give us product plus heat energy, high amount of heat energy. Okay? So this heat energy can be used for mechanical purposes. So, during the combustion, fuel will undergo oxidation with the oxygen that leads to com gives a combustion product and it gives high amount of energy. So, in generally, the atoms present in the fuel will react with oxygen. So, atoms like carbon, hydrogen and sulfur will react uh, with oxygen and that gives large amount of heat energy that can be used for mechanical purposes. Okay? So, fuel will undergo oxy oxidation with uh, oxygen and that gives heat energy, heat energy. So now in this topic, I will talk about calculation of air quantities. So, so in calculation of air quantity means to find out the amount of oxygen and hence uh, air required for the combustion. So in general guys, we don't supply pure oxygen, we will supply air and oxygen present in the air will react with the fuel and that gives heat energy. So in general, we are in mean, calculation of air quantities in the sense, we are calculating the amount of oxygen required as well as amount of air required for complete combustion. So complete combustion means, uh, say for example, when I consider carbon, so complete combustion in the sense when carbon reacts with oxygen, it gives carbon dioxide. So conversion of carbon into carbon dioxide can be called as complete combustion. So in other words, if, uh, if carbon converts into carbon monoxide, this, this, cannot keep, this cannot be considered as complete combustion, it is partial combustion. So for this, we need another mole of oxygen is equal that converts into carbon dioxide. Okay. So in, uh, for, for, uh, for hydrogen, so it, it, it will convert into water. So we must know the difference between complete combustion and partial combustion. So carbon converts into carbon dioxide is complete combustion and carbon monoxide is partial combustion. Okay. So here we are finding out the amount of air as well as amount of oxygen required for the complete combustion of the fuel. Now for uh, calculation of air quantities, we must follow certain principles. So we will discuss uh, one by one. The first principle is law of definite proportions. So according to law of definite, definite proportion, every atom present in the fuel will react with oxygen according to stoichiometry. Say for example, let me write one basic one, carbon plus oxygen will give carbon dioxide and complete combustion. So here 12 grams of carbon will react with 32 grams of oxygen and that produces 44 grams of carbon dioxide. So every atom will react with oxygen in a definite proportion. So it is according to their molecular masses. So here 12 parts, I mean 12 grams of carbon will react with 32 grams of uh, oxygen that produces 44 grams of carbon dioxide. So when I write law of definite proportions for this particular reaction, it will be 12 is to 32 is to 44. So 12 grams carbon, 32 grams oxygen and produces 44 grams of product. Okay. And for uh, hydrogen, so if I write hydrogen plus of oxygen gives water. So here 2 grams will take 16 grams and it produces 18 grams of water. In other words, I will write it as 1 gram, 8 gram and so on. So 1 gram of hydrogen required 8 grams of uh, 
oxygen or else 2 grams of hydrogen required 16 grams of oxygen for complete combustion. So we have to follow this one. And here is carbon is a solid and hydrogen is a gas. Hydrogen is a gas. So in case of gases, we have to focus on the volume. So simply you can say as per the stoichiometry, one volume of hydrogen requires half volume of oxygen. So I will write here it is as, as one volume of hydrogen required 0.5 volume of oxygen. So one volume of hydrogen required 0.5 volume of oxygen. So this law is applicable purely for gases fuel. So gases like uh, hydrogen and sulfur like this. Okay. And in case of solids, we have to focus on molecular masses. And the second law is Avogadro's law. So you might have studied about Avogadro's law in your intermediate. Avogadro's law. So according to Avogadro's law, equal volumes of gases under similar conditions of pressure and temperature poses equal number of moles. So I repeat, equal volumes of gases under similar conditions of pressure and temperature poses equal number of moles. Say for example, let me consider one gaseous fuel like methane. So, uh, please remember this, any hydrocarbon on combustion with oxygen will produce only two products which are carbon dioxide and hydrogen. Only thing is you need to balance the chemical reaction. So you can balance the chemical reaction in four hydrogens were there and we have two hydrogens, I will write two here, four hydrogens and two plus two, four oxygens are there. So if I write two here, the entire reaction is balanced. So according to Avogadro's law, so I'm uh, all these kept all these are kept under similar temperature and pressure conditions. So in this case, all these molecules, all these gases will possess equal number of moles. So here, one mole require two mole, and it produces one mole and two mole. Okay, or else if I uh, I can write it as one volume, two volume, one volume, and two volume. Okay. So if I take one volume of methane, it requires two volumes of oxygen that produces one volume of carbon dioxide and one volume of uh, water molecule. So we can write uh, molecular masses also. So here I will write it as 16 grams of methane required. 32 plus 2, it is 64 grams of oxygen that produces 44 and 36 grams of water. 44 grams of carbon dioxide and 36 grams of water. Okay. So this is Avogadro law. So uh, gases at under similar conditions of pressure and temperature will possess same number of moles. So in the beginning I said that uh, we are supplying air, not oxygen. So here also we are calculating the amount of air required for complete combustion of a fuel. So in actual practice we supply air, not pure oxygen. So here we have to consider the percentage of oxygen present in the fuel also. So let me write. So air, per air contains air contains 23% of oxygen by weight and 21% of O2 by volume. Say for example, if I supply, if we supply 100 kgs of air, that is that contains 23 kgs of oxygen by weight, or else if we supply 100 liters of air, that contains 21 liters of oxygen by volume. Okay, so air, uh, please remember these points. So air contains 23% of oxygen by weight and 21% of oxygen by volume. Okay, so here, say, uh, let me write an example again. So 100 kg of air will have 23 kg of oxygen. Okay, so for example, I want to supply 1 kg of oxygen. 
so here one kg of O2. So for supplying one kg of air, one kg of oxygen, how much air I need to supply? So here one kg of air will be supplied by simply by you can do some cross multiplication. So one kg of air will be supplied by 100 by 23 kg of so one kg of oxygen will be supplied by 100 by 23 kg of air. So that is nothing but 4.35 kg of air. So when you supply 4.35 kg of air, that is equal to 1 kg of oxygen. I mean, uh, when you supply 4.35 kg of air, which means that we are supplied 1 kg of oxygen. Okay? And you can do the same calculation for volumes also. So in order to supply 1 liter of uh, 1 liter or 1 meter cube of uh, oxygen, we need to supply 4.76 uh, volume. Now for interconversions, uh, say for example, I have uh, air in weights, so I, I need to calculate air in volumes. So for this we have to use the mole formula. So in general guys, uh, for any molecule, when we supply, uh, sorry, when we take weight which is equivalent to its molecular weight, which is equal to its molecular weight, that is equal to 1 mole. And as we know guys, 1 mole of any gas occupies 22.4 liters of volume at STP. So here also, when we when we know the molecular weight of air, we can interconvert grams into liters like this. So here, molecular weight of air is considered as 28.94 gram per mole. Molecular weight of air is considered as 28.94 gram per mole. So when we take exactly 28.94 gram per mole, I mean like 98, so 28.94 grams of air, that is equal to 1 mole of air, and 1 mole of air will occupy 22.4 liters of volume at STP conditions. So when weight equals to molecular weight, that is that is equal to 1 mole. So here I will write it as 28.94 grams, which is equal to 1 mole and which is equal to 22.4 liters. So 28.94 grams equals to 1 mole and which is equal to 22.4 liters of water. So now let me equate these two, these two things only. Okay. So 28.94 grams equals to 22.4 liters. So now I will convert into kgs now. So 28.94 kg. So for conversion of kg, we have to multiply with 10 power minus 3 kg equals to 22.4 liters. So send the 10 power 3 to the other side. So which is nothing but 28.94 kg equals to 22.4 into 10 power 3 liters. So 10 cube liters is known as meter cube. So simply I will write here as 22.4 meter cube. So this is the interconversion. 28.94 grams equals to 22.4 liters or 28.94 kg equals to 22.4 meter cube. So you have 1 kg equals to 22.4 by 28.94 meter cube. So see, we have to remember these interconversions for converting mass of air into volume of air or uh, vice versa. So, 20, 1 kg equals to 22.4 by 28.94 meter cube. So, now we will see some calculations. Before that, we have to, there is a formula. So, please uh, listen to me carefully. So, at the beginning, I say that atoms present in the fuel will undergo reaction with oxygen that produces high amount of heat energy. So, atoms like carbon, Hydrogen, sulfur will react with oxygen and gives products as well as heat energy. And some atoms like nitrogen. So ni nitrogen can be considered as non-combustible matter present in the fuel. Okay. So even with the supply of oxygen under normal conditions, we cannot convert nitrogen into its oxides. So it is a non-combustible matter present in the fuel. So only combustible atoms are carbon, hydrogen and sulfur. Okay. So let me write uh, as per the law of proportions now. So uh, first one carbon, 
hydrogen and sulfur. Okay, so now coming to the carbon, so uh, go to the rule number one. So law of definite proportions again. Okay? So carbon will react with oxygen gives carbon dioxide. So you say 12 grams of carbon or 12 parts of carbon will react with 32 grams of 32 parts of oxygen and which produces 44 parts of carbon dioxide. So 12 grams require 32 grams of oxygen. Say for example, in my analysis I found that the weight of carbon is C. Okay. So for 12 grams I need, we need 32 grams and for C grams. So what is the requirement? So the requirement of carbon is to be C into the requirement of oxygen will be C into 32 by 12. Okay. So make it as one now. And for hydrogen, so we already know the reaction. H2 plus half O2 gives water. Okay. One gram requires eight grams and which produces uh, nine grams. Okay. So I'm dividing. So in fact it is two grams. 16 grams and 18 grams. So simply I'm uh, simplifying this in things. One, one part of hydrogen requires eight parts of oxygen. Okay. So in my analysis we found H parts of ox uh, hydrogen. So what is the oxygen required? So we have oxygen required equals to 8 into H. Okay. So for, for one part we need eight parts. For H parts we need eight H parts. Okay. And similarly for sulfur. Okay. So sulfur plus O2 gives SO2 and its molecular weight is 32, again its molecular weight is 32. So 32 grams of sulfur require 32 grams of oxygen. And uh, the weight of sulfur will be S uh, and what is the oxygen required. So it is straight away S into 32 by 32. Both they cancel, it is straight away S only. So the weight of sulfur and oxygen are same for combustion calculations. Okay. And here we need to consider one more thing. So fuel contains carbon, uh, hydrogen, sulfur, nitrogen, ash content and some moisture content also. So in addition to that, fuel may contain oxygen also. Okay. So here guys, uh, there are two things were there. And both the things, I mean, uh, whatever you choose, you will end up with the same formula of okay. Say for example, uh, our fuel contains oxygen. So oxygen present in the fuel means it is always associated with hydrogen. So here uh, the weight of hydrogen is H. So but hydrogen can be found in two different forms. So hydrogen can be found in different forms. Hydrogen which is associated with carbon or which is associated with oxygen. So in the form of moisture. So out of these two, hydrogen which is associated with carbon is combustible and which is associated with oxygen is non-combustible matter present in the water. Okay. So after getting the weight of hydrogen and we have to focus on the weight of oxygen. Okay. So that oxygen uh, will be associated with hydrogen. So we have to subtract the hydrogen weight which is associated with oxygen so that we will get the combustible hydrogen present in the fuel. Okay. In other words, we can say in gas, uh, the oxygen required for complete combustion will be equals to theoretical oxygen required based on chemical compositions minus oxygen available in the fuel. Okay. So oxygen required, I will write O2 required equals to theoretical O2 required minus O2 present in fuel. Okay. So in both the calculation you will end up with the same formula. So you are you know, you are supposed to remember any one of these things. So now let me calculate hydrogen which is associated with oxygen. So I will I will use the same thing. So I will use some different color chart, uh, different color pen now in order to differentiate the reaction. So same one. One part of hydrogen will associate with eight parts of oxygen. This is a stoichiometric equation. Say for example, in our analysis we found O grams of oxygen. Okay. So eight parts of if uh, if our fuel contains eight grams, which means that this eight grams will be associated with one gram of hydrogen. Okay. So in my in our analysis we found O grams of oxygen. So what will be the hydrogen weight which is associated with oxygen? So simply you multiply again. So let me drop these things. Okay. 
So one one gram of hydrogen will associate with the uh, eight grams of oxygen. So we got four grams of hydrogen, oxygen very well. So what is the weight? So weight of hydrogen which is associated with oxygen is O by eight simply. Okay. Now coming to the combustible hydrogen. So combustible hydrogen will be equals to H minus hydrogen which is associated with oxygen. Okay. So go to the first reaction again. So one one part of hydrogen, one gram of hydrogen equal eight grams. So our analysis should be. H minus O by H. Please have these things. Okay. Now what is the weight of these things? Okay. So simply we will be writing as oxygen required is eight into H minus O by H. Now uh, write the formula now. So amount of I will write here amount of O two required equals to for carbon it is C into thirty two by twelve. And for hydrogen, it is eight into H minus O by eight, and for sulfur, it is straight away sulfur. Okay. And uh, when you modify the equation, it is C into thirty two by twelve into sorry plus eight H plus sulfur minus O. Okay. So just now I said that. Theoretical oxygen is coming. Oxygen required equals to theoretical oxygen required minus oxygen present in the fuel. So for carbon thirty two point thirty two by twelve and for hydrogen eight H and for sulfur directly S and minus sub we are subtracting oxygen weight present in the fuel. Okay. So actually we are not supplying pure oxygen. So I will write it as amount of A. Okay. So when we take in grams, so it is. Completely into hundred by twenty three because oxygen. I mean, air contains twenty three percent of oxygen by weight. So now we will do some uh, numericals based on the things now. So we will do some weight calculation. After that, we will do some back volume calculation in this uh, lecture now. So first, for write down the formula. So amount of A required equals to C into thirty two by twelve plus eight H plus S minus O into Hundred by twenty three. Okay, and uh, students, please don't get uh, confused with the Dulong formula and the uh, H quantities. So, in Dulong's formula, we directly take the percentages of carbon, hydrogen, sulfur, and oxygen. So, in this one, we are not supposed to take the percentages. We have to convert that uh, fuel weight. I mean, we have to convert. We have to uh, calculate the weights of individual atoms present in the fuel first, and after that, we have to substitute the Weights in the formula, then you will get it. You will get the amount of A required for the complete combustion of fuel. Okay. So uh, the uh, right hand question number one. I am writing on the board. Calculate amount of A required for one kg of carbon. For one kg of carbon, so please look at the question once. Calculate the amount of A required for one kg of carbon. So in this case, we got only one uh, atom called carbon. So just substitute in the things now. So amount of A required equals to one kg. I am directly substituting here one into thirty two by twelve, and the result is zero. So we need to calculate it. Calculate. So hundred by twenty three. Okay. So on calculation, on uh, cancelling all the things, you will end up with some eleven point five four kg of A. Okay. So eleven point five four. Sir, do the calculations. 
It's 11.59 ms. 11.59 kg of air is required for complete combustion of 1 kg of carbon. Now, after getting the weight of air, uh, we are getting weight of air in kgs. So, I need to convert this weight into volumes again. Okay? So, uh, I just said 1 kg of air equals to 22.4 by 28.94 meter cube. Okay, so now we got 11.59 kg. So simply 11. Point. So here instead of amount I will write weight of A and here I will write volume of A. Volume of A equals to 11.59 into 22.4 by 28.94 meter cube. So you will roughly get uh, some uh, 8.97 meter cube. Okay. So this way we are converting weight of A, weight of A into volume of A. So 11.59 kg by mass and 8.97 meter cube by volume. Now we will do the second problem. So please uh, write the problem on board. 1 kg of Coal sample contains percentages it is seventy five point four percent carbon. One kg of coal sample contains seventy five seventy five point four percentage of carbon. <coughs> 5.3 percentage of hydration. So I wrote all these numericals on the textbook. Let me take my notebook so that you will understand the proper way. So 75.4 percent carbon, 5.3 percent hydration, and 12.6 uh, percent oxygen, 3.2 percent nitrogen and followed by last one 1.3% sulfur okay so out of uh, <coughs> out of all these atoms nitrogen is non combustible matter present in the fuel so we need not to worry about this nitrogen part so here you focus on the values now and uh, let me push, complete the question so 1 kg of coal sample contains 75.4% of carbon 5.3% uh, per of hydrogen 12.6% per of oxygen 3.2 percentage of nitrogen and 1.3 percentage of sulfur. Okay, and calculate the amount of amount I mean weight and volume of air required for complete combustion. So calculate the weight and volume of air required for complete combustion. Okay, so here yeah, just now I said that in Dulong's formula we are directly directly taking the percentages of carbon, hydrogen, sulfur, and we are substituting the formula. But in this case. First, convert, I mean, calculate the weight of carbon which is present in 1 kg of coal sample. Okay? So then you substitute in the formula here. Okay? So now we have 1 kg of coal and the carbon will have 75.4%. That is equal to, I am writing in kgs only, 0.754 kg. And uh, for hydrogen, it is 5.3 percent hydrogen 5.3 percent so which is nothing but 0 0.053 kg okay and uh, whereas uh, sulfur it is 1.3 percent so sulfur 1.3 percent which is nothing but 0 0.013 kg and oxygen last part is 12.3 6% so it is 0.126 kg okay so after converting this percentages of atoms into its weight then you substitute in the formula so the simple formula again so weight of A equals to carbon weight it is uh, 0 0.754 I am writing in uh, I am taking in cages so I will get answer in cages only 0 0.754 into 32 by 12 plus hydrogen 8 into 8 into 0 0.053 
and uh, sulfur weight. Directly we can take the sulfur weight. 0 0.013 minus 0.126, which is the weight of oxygen, into 100 by 23. Okay. So just to solve the things now. Let me use the calculator. Okay, so you will get 2.01 for this case and 8 into 0 0.053 you will get around uh, 0.424 plus 0 0.013 minus 0 0.126 into 100 by 23. Okay, so on solving you will get uh, around 2.321 into 100 by 23. Okay. So at the end, we will get 10.09 kg of A. Okay. And uh, for converting it, uh, this weight of A into volume, you simply multiply with, uh, I will mean, write, volume equals to 10.09 into inter conversion things, it is 22.4 by 28.94 meter cube. So please uh, do the calculation and uh, get the answer. Okay. And uh, student, please uh, don't stress on this formula. So please uh, focus only on the concept. Once you understand the concept, you automatically deduce the formula using that uh, all uh, all the things which we are discussed earlier. Okay. So now we will do some different kind of problem now. And for that problem, uh, we don't need all these uh, new problems. Uh, I mean all these formulas now. So right, uh, take down the question. Now uh, instead of uh, masses, I will jump into the volumes now. Okay. Is not only question one meter cube of so one meter cube I am getting in the volumes now one a meter cube of fuel so write it as a gaseous fuel contains 40 percent methane CH4 22 percent ethane C2 at 6, 12 percent hydrogen, and uh, so 40 percent, 22 percent, and 12 percent, it is 66 and 76, and 10 percent carbon monoxide, and uh, 1 meter cube of fuel contains 40 percent methane, 22 percent ethane, 12 percent hydrogen, 10 percent carbon monoxide, 14 percent acetylene CO2, and the remaining part is oxygen. Okay. So calculate the volume of air required for complete combustion of fuel. Okay. So here, after getting this, you need not to worry about the other things now, CH4, C2H6 like thing. Uh, in fact, this numerical is very simple when compared to the previous numerical which we have done. Uh, which we have done. Okay. So here, yeah, uh, for anything, you are supposed to write the balance equation. So I said that uh, you apply the first uh, principle for calculation of air quantities, which is, which is law of definite proportions. And here, uh, when you combust any hydrocarbon, which always produces carbon dioxide and water. So only thing you need to do is uh, balance the equation. Okay, so I am writing the first and second one now. First one, methane. So methane will react with oxygen, will gives carbon dioxide and water. So we need to focus on balancing the chemical reaction now. So we have one carbon and one carbon. We have four hydrogens. 
So right, let me write 4 now. So we got 4 hydrogens. 2 plus 2, 4 oxygens are there. So I will write 4 oxygens. Now here, one part or one volume of methane requires 2 volume of oxygen. Now you calculate, you calculate the volume of A, uh, volume of methane present in the 1 meter cube of air. So methane contains 40 percent. So let me write it as 0.4 volume or I will write 0.4 meter cube. Okay. So for one volume it requires 2 volumes. For 0.4 meter cube it requires 0.8 meter cube of oxygen. Okay. And first one. And in the second one, ethane. So C2 had 6, again O2, you will always get carbon dioxide and water. Now balancing equation. Okay. So two carbon atoms are there. So let me write 2 here. And uh, we have 6 hydrogens, 3. And we have now how many are there? 2 plus 2 to the 4 and 3, 7 are there. Okay. So if I write here 7 by 2 O2, that is balanced. So 7 atoms, oxygen atoms. 2 to the 4 and 3. So 7, 7 oxygen atoms. The reaction is balanced now. Now you focus on the things. So it is 22 point, sorry, 22 percent. So one volume of methane requires 3.5 volume of oxygen. So we have 0 0.22. So when you calculate, no, calculate. Go back, go back. So one volume of uh, ethane required three point five volume of oxygen. Uh, oxygen. We have point two two. So let me multiply three point five into point two two. So you will get point seven seven. So two point two two meter cube required point seven seven meter cube. So second one we got it. Now third one, simple hydrogen. So H2 plus half O2 gives water. Okay. Now the percentage of hydrogen is 12 percent. So it is 0.12 meter cube. So here, yeah, um, before that, so one volume of hydrogen required half volume. So we have 0.12 meter cube. So simply it is point 0 0.06 meter cube for hydrogen and now for carbon monoxide just now I said that complete combustion in the sense carbon will convert into carbon dioxide so even this carbon monoxide also will undergo combustion that produces carbon dioxide so we have to consider this one also okay. so fourth one carbon monoxide plus half oxygen will produce carbon dioxide again again you take one volume 0.5 volume and uh, we have 10% which is nothing but 0 0.01 and it requires 0 0.05 meter cube and for ethane you apply to calculate in the same manner for a second meter per C2H2 plus O2 gives carbon dioxide and water okay. now when you see here uh, first balance equation so two carbon atoms were there. So let me write two here. Now we have two hydrogens, which is satisfied two hydrogens. So two to the four and five. So five oxygens are there in the right hand side. So you put five by two here. Okay. So one volume of one volume of methane. So acetine require two point five volume of O2. Now, uh, in our numerical, we have 14, 14, 14 percent. 
so point one four point one four meter cube requires so how much two point five into point one four so you will get point three five meter cube now we got total oxygen required but the oxygen required is equals to theoretical oxygen required minus oxygen present in the fuel so in our numerical we have this oxygen message so 40 plus 22 62 plus 12 74 74 84 and plus uh, 14 it is 98 and we have 2 percent oxygen so 2 percent oxygen means it is uh, 0 0.02 meter cube okay so now add everything now so amount of sorry volume of O2 equals to add everything so 0.8 plus 0.77 plus third one 0.06 plus fourth one point 0 0.5 and last one 0.35 okay and the weight of I mean, volume of air required oxygen required equals to theoretical oxygen required minus oxygen present in the fuel minus 0 0.04 so now on calculation 0 0.8 plus 0.77 plus 0.06 plus 0 0.05 plus 0 0.35 minus 0 0.02 okay. so we are getting around 2.01 meter cube of ocean okay. now, now we have to calculate the volume so volume of A equals to 2.01 into and A contains 21% of oxygen by volume so you multiply with 100 by 21 here meter cube so it is uh, into 100 divided by 21 so you are getting around 9.5 57 meter cube okay so here yeah, for masses we have direct formula of carbon the hydrogen sulfur and oxygen and for gases fuels we have to write the balanced equation of each and every component present in the fuel then you can get the answer okay so without writing the balance equation you, uh, you cannot get the answer so first focus on balancing the equation and it is very simple only so any I mean combustion of any hydrocarbon produces carbon dioxide and water so please remember this uh, principles okay you will do the numericals thank you